In the US, summer is for sand, sun, and blockbuster movies. And this summer, we're going to use those movies to learn English and study how to sound American. Every video this summer is going to be a study English with movies video. We'll pull scenes from the summer's hottest movies as well as favorite movies from years past. It's amazing what we can discover by studying even a small bit of English dialogue. We'll study how to understand movies, what makes Americans sound American, and of course, any interesting vocabulary, phrasal verbs, or idioms that come up in the scenes we study. I call this kind of exercise a Ben Franklin exercise. First, we'll watch the scene. Then, we'll do an in-depth analysis of what we hear together. This is going to be so much fun. Be sure to tell your friends and spread the word that all summer long, every Tuesday, we're studying English with movies here at Rachel's English. If you're new to my channel, click subscribe and don't forget the notification button. Let's get started. First, the scene. What do you want from me? Yes? My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. Your mom is crazy. I'm scared of her. She's not crazy. She just, you know, she, she has a big heart. She's very warm. Now, the analysis. What do you want from me? I love this phrase. It's a little bit sassy. There's one really clear stressed word, and she does a movement on it as she says it. She puts her foot down on the stressed word. Watch it again and listen for that. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? And the most stressed word is want. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? So the energy goes up towards the peak of want. What do you want from me? And then it falls down away from that peak. What do? We have a T and a D. How are these two words pronounced? Let's go ahead and throw in this word too. How are these three words pronounced? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? And they're pronounced, what do you, what do you, what do you? So the vowels in do and you are not reduced. It could, you could hear that what are ya, what are ya. You could hear the mishwas, but she's making them both ooh vowels. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you? But notice the T here is dropped and she's just using the D to link the two words together. What do, what do. So it's a flap because it comes between two vowel sounds. And the T is also a flap when it comes between two vowel sounds. So it's sort of like she's combining the two, or you can think of it as dropping the T. But this would be a pretty common way to pronounce the phrase, what do you, 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 what do you. I would say it's the most common way. You can just forget about the T and link it into the D. What do you, what do you want from me? 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 Want from me. Want from me. So we have a stop T. Want from. Want from. And the word from is reduced. It's not from. It's from. From. I would write it with a schwa. From me. From me. Then here we have ending M, beginning M, links together with just a single M sound. Very smooth. No breaks, no skips or jumps in the intonation here. Uh, just a smooth up and down. What do you want from me? 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 Yes. Yes. And she does a head gesture. She's impatient. Why is this guy showing up at her work? Yes. Upward pitch shows that it's a yes, no question. She's saying, I'm expecting you to talk here. Yes. 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 My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. Whoa, different day, different outfit, important announcement. Did you know that with this video, I made a free audio lesson that you can download? In fact, I'm doing this for each one of the YouTube videos I'm making this summer, all 11 of the Learn English with Movies videos. So follow this link or find the link in the video description to get your free downloadable audio lesson. It's where you're going to train all of the things that you've learned about pronunciation in this video. Back to the lesson. Yes. My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. 
So we have several stress words here. My my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. So I'm hearing those as our four most stress levels, a little bit longer, up, down shape. The energy goes towards them and then it comes away. But we have lots of other interesting things with pronunciation that are happening here. My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. My, my grandma, my, 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 my. Both the words my are unstressed. They're said really quickly. They're low in pitch. My, 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 my. So you have to simplify the mouth position. You can't do this big jaw drop for the eye diphthong like you might do in a stressed syllable. My, 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 my. My, my grandma, my, my grandma, my, my grandma. Grandma. So it's a stressed word, and yet we don't say the D. Very common to drop the D in this word. We often drop the D between two consonants. Here it comes after N, before M, and it's dropped. Grandma. My, my grandma. My, my grandma. My, my grandma. And actually, he's dropping the N, too. So this can be pronounced with the N, grandma. But you know what? It's actually not that common either. In this particular word, grandma. Grandma. A vowel. Followed by the M consonant. When A is followed by M, it's not pure. We add an A uh, vowel. Grandma. 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 Try that. My, my grandma. My, my grandma. My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. Wanted me to tell you. Actually, I really need another line here, another curve on wanted. Now, it's interesting. It is stressed. It's the verb. Usually we don't reduce stressed words, but you know what? Sometimes we do, and that's happening here. Wanted. The T is not there. Sometimes we drop the T after N. That's what's happening. Wanted. Wanted. But the ED ending still follows the rule for ED after T, and that is it adds an extra syllable. It's the I vowel plus D sound. Wanted. Wanted. Wanted me to. Wanted me to. The other thing that you might notice is the word two is not pronounced two. It's pronounced d, d, d. It's a flap T in the schwa. Wanted me to. Wanted me to. Wanted me to tell. Wanted me to tell you that. Wanted me to tell you that. Wanted me to tell you that she missed you. Tell you that she missed you. Tell you that she missed you. Okay, so the word that. Tell you that she. It's reduced. It's not that. But it's the, the, it's the schwa instead of the a vowel, the, 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 tell you that she, so between the stressed words tell and miss, we have three unstressed words and they're all said really quickly and they're flat, lower in pitch, you that she, you that she, you that she. Tell you that she, tell you that she, tell you that she missed you at Christmas. Now the ed ending after s is pronounced as a T sound, so it does not add an extra syllable. Missed you. Missed you. But that's not what's happening, is it? Let's listen. That she missed you at Christmas. That she missed you at Christmas. That she missed you at Christmas. Okay, so what's happening here? We do drop the T sometimes when it comes between two consonants, just like I said we do with the D here, although we were actually dropping the N and the D in that case. But we do drop the T between two consonants. So here T comes after the S sound. It comes before the Y consonant. I'm not really hearing the T. I'm certainly not hearing T, a released T. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say you can drop that sound. You can drop the ED ending. And this is something that my students ask me sometimes. They say, I don't hear the ED ending sometimes. And I think that when they don't hear it is when it makes a T sound but it comes between two consonants. I think this is a case where it gets dropped a lot in conversational English. She missed you at Christmas. She missed you at Christmas. I know exactly what's being said. I know that it's past tense. I'm not hearing it and thinking it's not past tense because I know the context and I'm used to T's being dropped between two consonants. 
that she missed you at Christmas. That she missed you at Christmas. That she missed you at Christmas. Missed you at Christmas. You it, you it, you it. So here we have two more unstressed words together. They're flat in pitch. They're said very quickly. The a vowel is reduced. It's the schwa. It, it, it. Stop T. So that and at are similar in that they both reduce often with the a vowel becoming the schwa. And then the T is a stop T when it's followed by a word that begins with a consonant. That she missed you at Christmas. That she missed you at Christmas. That she missed you at Christmas. Like Christmas. Okay, let's keep talking about our T's between consonants. How is this T pronounced? Christmas. 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 It's dropped. Christmas. 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 Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. What are our stress syllables there? Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, yeah, that has a little stress. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. N, anyway, as well, stressed. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Tiny little break after yeah, yeah, well. Tiny little break after well. Yeah, yeah, well, I couldn't have gone. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone. And then very smooth, I couldn't have gone anyway. How is she making those words link together so smoothly? Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Well, she's dropping the H and have. That's common. And she's actually dropping the apostrophe T in the N apostrophe T contraction. That happens sometimes too. It happens especially when N apostrophe T is followed by a word that begins with a vowel or a diphthong. Now, this word typically begins with a consonant, but that often gets dropped. So it's not a consonant. It is a vowel. Couldn't have. And so the N is linking right into the vowel, and the vowel is reduced. It's not a, ah, it's the schwa. Couldn't have. Couldn't have. Couldn't have. Try that. Let's do it slowly. Couldn't have. So I'm putting the tongue up into position for the D. Couldn't. I'm not releasing the D. I'm going right into an N sound. Couldn't have. Couldn't have. Couldn't have. Couldn't have, couldn't have, couldn't have, couldn't have. That really smooths it out, doesn't it? A lot smoother than couldn't have. Couldn't have. Well, I couldn't have gone. Well, I couldn't have gone. Well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Couldn't have gone anyway. Gone anyway. Gone anyway. Ending N. Ending consonant. Links into beginning vowel. The E eh of anyway. And it's just all very smoothly connected. Actually... She keeps going. She smoothly connects the A diphthong into the M consonant. Well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Well, I couldn't have gone anyway. Well, I couldn't have gone anyway. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. So this is actually a pretty long thought group. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. What are our most stressed words here? My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. My mom, a little bit of length there, a little bit of higher pitch. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. Pissed and Thanksgiving. Okay, now here we have another ED ending. It comes after S, an unvoiced sound. Therefore, it is the T. I do have a video on ED endings if you're not sure about the rules for pronunciation. So you can search on YouTube, Rachel's English ED endings, and you'll find it there. It's pretty simple, the rules. Last time we dropped the T in mist because it was followed by a word that began with a consonant. But here the next word begins with a vowel. And do you hear a T sound? My mom was pissed about. My mom was pissed about. My mom was pissed about. Definitely. I definitely hear a true T releasing into the vowel. Pissed about. Tabout. 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 Pissed about. 
My mom was pissed about. My mom was pissed about. My mom was pissed about. I also want to point out the word was isn't was. That's stressed. It's was unstressed. Said very quickly, I would write that with a schwa. Was, 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 was pissed. Was pissed about. Then we have a stop T in about because the next word begins with a consonant. It's the TH, unvoiced, of Thanksgiving. My mom was pissed about. My mom was pissed about. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, middle syllable stressed. Have you noticed when you look this word up in the dictionary, it says it's the a as in bat vowel. It's followed by the ng consonant. The letter n here is actually the ng sound because it's followed by k. And when those two sounds come one after another in the same syllable, usually the k makes the n an ng sound instead. So it's made at the back of the tongue where the k is instead of at the front of the tongue. Now, when the a vowel is followed by ng, it is not a. I'm sure you can tell it's not tha. Thanksgiving. Tha. Thanks. But it's thanks. When a is followed by the ng consonant, it sounds a lot more like the a diphthong. Thanks. Thanks. And that's just like over on the other slide where we talked about the word grandma. The a vowel followed by the m consonant here and the vowel changes. So the a vowel changes when it's followed by nasal consonants. M or n, we add an a uh sound. A. Followed by ng, it changes to the a diphthong more or less. Thang. Thanksgiving. 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 Your mom is crazy. I'm scared of her. She's Your mom is, and then a break, thinking about, wow, what to say about this girl's mom. Your mom is, what's stressed there? Your mom is, your mom is, your mom is. Very clear, isn't it? Your mom is, your mom is. It's the middle word mom. Your mom is, your mom is. The word your is reduced. It's not your, but it's said much faster than that. I would write it with the schwa, reduced vowel, your, 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 your mom, your mom, your mom is. Your mom is, your mom is, your mom is crazy. I'm scared of her. Crazy. I'm scared of her. So even though this is two different sentences, he links them right together. He does not stop. They make one thought group. Crazy. I'm scared of her. 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 Actually, that's not how he said it. He did say the H here. So earlier, she dropped the H on the word have. It's very common to drop the H on words like have, had, her, he, him. But we don't always do it. He doesn't do it. It's still unstressed. I'm scared of her, of her, of her, of her, of her. But the H isn't dropped. Crazy. I'm scared of her. Crazy. I'm scared of her. Crazy. I'm scared of her. Okay, what are our stressed words, our stressed syllables in this thought group? Crazy. I'm scared of her. Crazy. I'm scared of her. Crazy. I'm scared of her. Crazy. Crazy. I'm scared of her. Cray and scare. Longer with that up-down shape of pitch. Everything really smoothly connected. The lower unstressed syllables fall right into the same line. No skips or jumps in intonation. Crazy, I'm scared of her. Crazy, I'm scared of her. Crazy, I'm scared of her. Scared of her. Scared of her. Of her. Of her. Of her. I would probably write of with the schwa. Sometimes we drop the V sound here, which the letter F makes the V sound, but he doesn't. He does make a quick V sound of, 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 of her, of her, of her, of her, of her. I'm scared of her. I'm scared of her. I'm scared of her. She's not crazy. She's not crazy. She's not crazy. So cray, the most stressed syllable there in that little thought group, and the intonation of she's and not builds up towards that. She's not crazy. She's not. She's not. She's not. Do you hear how the pitch is rising there towards the peak of cray? She's not crazy. Crazy. 
And we have a stop T at the end of not because the next word begins with a consonant sound. She's not crazy. She's not crazy. She's not crazy. She just. She just. How is that pronounced? She just. She just. She just. She reduces the word just. It's not just. It's just, 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 just. T is dropped. Vowel is the schwa. Just, just, just. She just, she just, she just. Flat in pitch. Said quickly. Unstressed. She just. She just. She just. You know, she. You know, you know, you know. Little filler phrase here while she thinks. You know, you know, you know. Often we reduce the word you to ya in this little filler phrase. She does. Ya, ya, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know, she, you know, she, you know, she. She, she, she says the word she, it's fast. It, even though she stops to repeat herself, the word sort of is on its own. It's still said very quickly, low in pitch. She, she, she. You know, she. You know, she, you know, she, she has a big heart. She has a big heart. She's defending her mother here. Two stressed words. She has a big heart. So big, even though it's an adjective, it's not as stressed as the other two stressed words there. She has a big heart. Heart. So I would say the word big, even though it is a content word, doesn't really feel stressed. And that's something you'll notice as you study pronunciation is that, you know, we say content words are stressed, function words are unstressed. Totally not true. Sentences with lots of content words will have some content words that sound stressed and some that sound unstressed because there are other content words that are more important that are stressed in that sentence. She has a big heart. She has a big heart. She has a big heart. Has, the letter S here, is pronounced as a Z, and that Z links right into the next sound, which is the schwa, has a, has a, has a big heart. And did you notice there's a stop T here? T, we often say in clusters, and ending clusters, it's a true T, but that's not really true with NT or RT. I've noticed with RT, it's really a lot more like a stop T. Heart, heart, and that's what she does here. Heart. 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 She's very warm. She's very warm. She's very warm. There and warm. Stress there. I'm sure you can notice that the aw as in law vowel in the word warm doesn't sound like aw. Aw. Warm. O, o, o. It's much more closed when it's followed by r. The letter r, the sound r does change that vowel. Lips round a little bit more. Tongue pulls back a little bit more. Whoa, warm, warm, not aw, which is the symbol you'll see if you look it up in a dictionary. She's very warm. She's very warm. She's very warm. Let's listen to the whole conversation one more time. What do you want from me? Yes? My, my grandma wanted me to tell you that she missed you at Christmas. Yeah, well, I couldn't have gone anyway. My mom was pissed about Thanksgiving. Your mom is crazy. I'm scared of her. She's not crazy. She just, you know, she, she has a big heart. She's very warm. We're going to be doing a lot more of this kind of analysis together. What movie scenes would you like to see analyzed like this? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to see all my Ben Franklin videos, click here. You'll also find the link in the video description. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English. If you want to see my absolute latest video, click here. If you're new to the channel, check out this Where to Start playlist. Click here to subscribe. I make new videos on American English every Tuesday. To be sure we can keep in touch, click here to sign up for my newsletter. You'll get free lessons in your inbox every week.